Yesterday and today are holy days for people of the Jewish faith. So it's a time when they can't readily enter the public debate, which is kind of unfortunate because we've had an issue come to light during this period that's very important for Jewish people in Australia. Our Foreign Minister Penny Wong quietly changed Australia's stance on Israel and its capital. You'll remember under Scott Morrison, Australia recognised West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, following America's lead. Labor never liked that decision, didn't like it at the time. And yesterday, people noticed that they had quietly deleted the following words from a Department of Foreign Affairs website. Until yesterday, it said, consistent with this long-standing policy, in December 2018, Australia recognised West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, being the seat of the Knesset and many of the institutions of the Israeli government. It went on to say Australia looks forward to moving its embassy to West Jerusalem when practical, in support of and after the final status determination of a two-state solution. Now, only after these deletions, those words were deleted from the DFAT website and that was noticed publicly. Only then did Penny Wong come out and confirm the change. And here's what she said today. You know what this was, though? This was a cynical play, unsuccessful, to win the seat of Wentworth in a by-election. Uh, and what people saw was the Prime Minister of the day uh, uh, trying to play foreign policy in order to win votes in a seat. Uh, I, for that reason, I made clear at the time, we reaffirmed our view that Jerusalem is a final status issue. What do those words mean? It means that they have to be, that has to be resolved through negotiation between the parties. Was there politics involved in the original decision by the Morrison government, a political decision? Politics involved in a political decision? Of course there was. But in foreign policy terms, this was the right thing to do as well. It was a firm sign of support for Israel. It signals that in any two-state solution, Israel must have West Jerusalem as its capital. As if Israel could or should ever accept anything less. This all followed the American move, of course, long promised by Republicans and Democrats, and it was one that Donald Trump actually followed through on. It's worth noting that after that decision, Israel was able to establish diplomatic relations with four Arab nations, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, Sudan and Morocco. This strongly suggests that something changed and changed for the better. Australia should have stuck the course, but now it's gone with the anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian vibe of the UN lot. And I can tell you there's been a strong reaction today from Israel. The Prime Minister has said it's a shambolic decision from the Australian government. The country's foreign ministry says Israel is deeply disappointed and they hope Australia reconsiders. And this comes as we learn that a radical leftist opponent of Israel, Jay Tharapel, who has sported slogans such as curse on Jews and death to Israel, well, he's been now accepted as a member of the Australian Labor Party in New South Wales. Therapol is also a public supporter of Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. No wonder members of the Jewish community here in Australia might be worried about the commitment of the Albanese Labor government and the broader green left to Israel.